The following video will contain scenes from a video capture device which will not appear correctly in the video itself. Due to limitations on my capture and recording setup, they will appear filtered and they will not look the way they did on the monitor or in the actual captured files. Please check the description for links to PNG conversions of the images I captured, which are pixel for pixel perfect and identical to the originals. Thank you and enjoy. Hey folks, I got something special here. This is the video capture VC1000 and I have no fucking clue if I'm going to be able to get this working, but if I can, it's going to be a delight, I promise. This is a video capture card from the ancient days. This is very, very, very old, and the idea of this existing is sort of inconceivable to me. So, to give you an idea, here is what it looks like, and as you can see, it runs off an ISA card. So that places it sometime before the Pentium era, certainly, early 90s at the absolute latest. I think I've checked the book. I don't think I found a copyright date, but let's take a look. Well, there it is. November 1988. Uh, I was born a couple months before this thing came out. What's exciting about this to me is that this was designed to work on a PC, XT, AT, or PS2. On EGA, VGA, CGA, MDA, or Hercules. So, in theory, this is going to convert typical television video into, well, that. And I'm tremendously excited to see what this looks like in, in EGA, for instance. I really doubt that it can do live capture. It probably can't do video at all. I'm guessing I'm going to like hit the button and then like a little bit later I'm going to get a picture out of it. But, you know, that's good enough for me. Also, to really drive home the fact this thing is not new, here's the software on five and a quarter inch floppies. So that's why I hadn't demoed it until now is because I didn't have anything with a five and a half inch floppy drive. But I've since gotten that and added it to my Pentium 1 machine. And so now that I have set the Pentium 1 aside and replaced it with a Pentium 3 for typical work, uh, I can go ahead and use it to get this thing running without worrying about messing up my normal workflow. I've already gone over this with a friend and decided that this board really doesn't do much. This is basically just a serial input board. Um, all the magic is definitely happening in here. None of this stuff is analog, and because this is capturing from NTSC video, there's no question that it's going to need analog circuitry, especially because it's got the brightness and contrast controls on here. So I'm 100% positive that this is just a special serial interface, but it's one that you're never going to find anywhere else. You know, come to think of it, I would love to put this next to the interface board from like a one of those Logitech palm scanners and see how different it is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the exact same technology, maybe even the same protocol. I'm guessing this isn't going to work with anything newer than maybe DOS 5 at the most. Um, I mean, there's a possibility, but DOS 5 is the oldest thing I've written out right now. What do I have in the drive? DOS 7. Alright, here we are. Started. Let's get the software. Video capture pictures. So that's somebody else's captures, I'm guessing. This is the utility. That's the program master disk, device drivers, and auxiliary program disk for Halo DPE. Yep, that's this guy. Okay, so I think we're going to start with this. All right, there's no obvious install utility, so I'm going to try just running it. Diamond Flower Electric Instrument. There we go. I think I need to copy everything onto the hard drive. Let's see if the book reveals much. Ah, I see. I've misapprehended what was going on here. The uh, Halo DPE is the editor software. The uh, device itself is not called that. All right, I need to make a working copy of the VC-1000 utility disk on my hard drive. Copy everything on there. Oh, it looks like it might be... Maybe that's it. Yeah, it seems like that's it, so... Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a directory and copy everything onto the C drive. By the way, this was put out by Media Cybernetics, Inc. That cyberpunk is fuck. Okay, we've now copied everything. Now from the manual I've learned that there are different DMA settings that can be set. 
And to be frank, I have not used anything ISA based in many, many years, uh, with the exception of a sound card, which was later plug and play ISA. So I don't really know how to get this thing working. So follow along while I try and figure it out. Okay, so in theory we're here. This is the program. I'm gonna hit C. Okay, all right, so I have to hit a button on the video snapshot to start. So let's get that installed. All right, so I pressed the button but it didn't seem to respond, so I'm not sure if it worked. I'm not sure if it's seeing the device. So, all right, um, I better get a video input for this thing. So we're gonna use this gadget here which is going to allow us to connect this camera into this box. Here we go. Nothing. All right. It didn't work. So I have no idea why it didn't work. And I don't really know if I'm supposed to see something right now or not. So I'm going to try the other software, which seems maybe a little more interactive. Okay, yeah, this says that the video capture has a DMA or IRQ conflict if this is happening. It looks like it's on DMA1. I think that's my sound card right now. That would explain it. Ah, war's hell. Naturally, I have to completely remove this thing in order to change the jumper. They couldn't put it in a convenient location, like on the edge of the board. All right, that took way too much effort. Holy shit. All right, that took way too much effort, but it's in now. All right, let's try it again. Oh no, there it is. Oh no. Wow, wow. Okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna drop the brightness a little. <laughs> oh, this is great. So this is in halftone mode, and there's other modes for capture that'll, I guess, diff dither it differently. And the manual describes a halftone switch, but this seems to have four options, so let's see what another one looks like. Okay, so that's no halftoning at all. Oh, we can capture multiple images into the same buffer. I see. Okay, so there we go. So that's no half toning, sort of a horizontal line only half tone. Uh, this hideous thing, I'm not sure what that would be good for. And then a sort of a more normal dithered appearance. So I filled up this buffer. What happens if I do it again? Nothing. It doesn't like that. All right. So let's uh, clear the buffer. And I'm going to increase the contrast. And decrease the brightness. And let's see what that looked like. There's a... That's the first one. And that's the second one. So if we look just at the monitor here, for instance, there's a lot more detail with the brightness turned down, unsurprisingly. What happens if we turn the contrast down too? Oh, I guess I have to start again. Well, that's really cool. Let's turn the contrast all the way up. We get this starkness. We turn the brightness up as well. Then it just sort of starts blowing everything out. Okay, now another option we have here is clear that. There's a full and a normal frame. And full, I think, gives a little more vertical resolution. So let's compare a full and a normal. Uh, it's not vertical resolution, it's horizontal resolution. You see the, um, we can see all the way out to the pause break on the keyboard here, uh, but here it's cut off. 
And it mentions this in the manual. It says that using, that using full mode results in getting a little more detail at less pixels per image component. All right, so can we save these? Uh, let's save all four pages. File format, whoa, MSP? I don't know what an MSP is. I've never heard of that before, but it describes it as MS Windows. Maybe, maybe I'll look that up later. Uh, but yeah, either TIFF or PCX would work, but I think I'll go with TIFF. So now I'm going to try it in one of the other visual modes, one of the other video modes. So let's try EGA next. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a different look. It almost seems like it runs a little bit faster, but I think that's because this is lower resolution. All right, let's try the CGA mode. Oh boy, oh, that's chunky. And I'm fairly certain that Hercules will not work on here. I don't think Hercules compatibility was built into anything. Nope, oh boy. Let's try Halo DPE again. All right. There we go. So how do we navigate here? Uh, oops, that draws. I don't know why this icon lower left that looks like a pencil. I don't know why that's undo. Maybe that's a uh, maybe that's like some sort of command buffer. And yeah, that's a paint bucket. Oh, here we go. I think this is how we move around. Wow. Oh, damn it. This program's confusing as fuck. All right, I'm just gonna grab a new image. That's how we zoom, but it, damn it. Oh, this program sucks really bad. There seems to be no way to just move around on the fly. It seems impossible. So this was actually sold as desktop publishing software for the for the manual, and uh, good, good luck with that. I don't know what you were gonna accomplish with this. Oh, that's cute. Uh, it's a paintbrush that just constantly ores whatever's under it, or knots? Knots, yes. This program's fucking nonsense. What a piece of shit. All right, so having done that, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Try this again. All right, that's pretty good. And now let's zoom and do it again. Oh, now that looks good. All right, now that looks better. See, these weird distortion effects. Yes, this is very good, actually. I don't even really understand what the fuck is going on right now, but it's exactly what I anticipated. Weird generative effects. Now I'm going to run the brightness down a little. There we go. All right, and now I've got these nice, like, weird-ass Serpinski triangle-looking things. Save as, echo three. So that's an interesting gadget. I've never seen anything like this before. The earliest capture devices I'd ever seen were for PC in like the late 90s, maybe the early 2000s. They were full color and had video. I've never seen a single frame grabber like this. It's a really neat gadget. So even though I can't do much more than what I've shown you with it, I had a really good time and I hope you did too. Take it easy.